Welcome back, chemists. Today we are going to talk about how to draw constitutional isomers for different compounds. An isomer is how you describe different substances that have the same molecular formula, so the same chemical composition, uh, but they're put together differently. Uh, imagine having a bunch of Legos and taking them apart and putting them back together to make something new. That's how we treat isomers. There are lots of types of isomers in organic chemistry. Uh, today we're just going to look at constitutional isomers which means they have completely different architectures and as a result they have different names. So thinking back to how we named at least hydrocarbons so far, uh, that's a good way to check if you've got a pair of isomers in front of you. Uh, so for today we're just going to challenge ourselves to draw as many as we're asked to for each of these molecular formula. So starting off with C3H6, it says it wants two different ways to do it. Uh, let's review a little bit of line structure. Remember, every point connected by lines is a carbon, so three carbons would look like that. And if I stopped there, that would actually be C3H8, and that doesn't fit the formula. So how do I take away two hydrogens? I have to share more electrons. In this case, you'll need a double bond, so we would have propene. It's kind of redundant to say one propene or prop1ene. It's not wrong, but there's no such thing as two propene, so no one says that this is propene. Now, if I were to draw this like that, that is not an isomer. That is just the same molecule flipped around. Uh, so how else do I put together three carbons and six hydrogens where it looks very different as a different name? Instead of a, a pi bond, you create a ring. That also removes hydrogens. That makes it unsaturated. Uh, which brings us to a useful formula, which is the degrees of unsaturation. I'm actually going to squeeze that into the top of your notes for today. There's what's called the degrees of unsaturation. And we can calculate what that is for any chemical formula. It tells us the number of rings and or pi bonds that we'll see in a structure. And it's equal to the number of carbons minus one half of the quantity how many hydrogens we have, plus how many halogens, which I'm gonna use an X for, minus how many nitrogens we have, and then plus one. So we are gonna use that today to practice so that we don't have to shoot in the dark with how many unsaturations we put in the formula. X is halogens, H is H, N is nitrogen, and C is carbon. Notice oxygen doesn't show up this formula, so it doesn't affect the degrees of unsaturation, uh, nor does sulfur. Uh, I suppose if we had a phosphorus, it would be the same as a nitrogen. A silicon, if we had an organosilane, would be the same as carbon, but these are the main elements we're going to be looking at. So if I calculated this for C3H6, uh, it would be 3 minus 1 half of 6 uh, minus 0 plus 0 plus 1, and you get 1. So we have one unsaturation, one pi bond or one ring, and that's exactly what we came up with just from, from trial and error. Right below it, in B, let's do the degrees of unsaturation first this time. So carbons minus one half of hydrogens. Uh, there's no nitrogens or halogens, and then plus one. So this one also has one degree of unsaturation. And I'll systematically do this uh, by starting with my longest carbon chain. Four carbons in a row would look like that. Uh, that's too many hydrogens. I need an unsaturation, so I need a pi bond. That works, so I could have the one butene molecule. I could also have the two butene molecule. Now, some of you might already know I arbitrarily drew what's called a trans butene. There is also a cis butene molecule, but that's not a constitutional isomer. That's something called a stereoisomer, which we're going to get to later. Uh, we call those geometric isomers when they're cis or trans. So for now, we'll just say there's one type of two butene uh, as a, one type of constitutional uh, arrangement. That means we have to look at a shorter carbon chain. So I'll try a three carbon chain, and now to add my fourth carbon, I need a branch. So I'll make a one carbon branch. That's still too many hydrogens. I need a double bond. So I'll put a double bond in between two of the carbons, and that's the only three carbon chain I can draw. So now I've got to go to rings. Well, with four carbons, there's the largest ring I could get would be cyclobutane, and that's it. That is C4H8. But I can do a three-membered ring version. I can do a cyclopropane with a methyl branch, and you get methyl cyclopropane. And there are the five, the five uh, isomers that we were asked to do. Okay, moving on. C, C2H4O. If I do my degrees of unsaturation, I get two minus one half of four plus zero minus zero plus one. 
So two minus two is zero plus one. I actually get, correction, one degree of unsaturation. So let's try a two carbon chain uh, with an oxygen. I could do that. And then if I wanna add a pi bond somewhere, I could put it between the carbon and the oxygen. I could get an aldehyde that's called ethanol. We haven't named functional group containing compounds yet, but that works. Sometimes I'm partial to drawing in the hydrogen of an aldehyde, so I'm going to here. You do not have to, but it's the one case where I like to draw in the hydrogen, even though it's attached to a carbon. I'm just from that school of thought to know that, uh, or to communicate that I'm not accidentally drawing a ketone and, and forgot a carbon. Uh, I could draw a two carbon chain and make it a pi bond between the carbons and then have an OH coming off of that carbon. That's different. That's technically something that uh, we'll learn later isomerizes to the first one, but I'm still going to keep it here for today. Uh, and then there's one way to do it with a ring, but this one has the oxygen in the ring. You get a molecule called oxirane. It's the simplest of all epoxides, which is a three-membered ring with an oxygen in the ring. Uh, then it gets really complicated. We get to D, which has three carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. If we do my degrees of unsaturation, you get three minus one-half of six plus one, I get one degree of unsaturation. Let's try to do this systematically. It says there's at least nine. So three carbons in a row, and then I'll put an oxygen, and then I'll create a pi bond. I'll start with a pi bond right there. Remember, we do draw hydrogens that are not attached to carbons. Check your formula. That is one, two, three carbons, one oxygen, and we have one, two, three, four, five, and six hydrogens. We're good. Notice I'm not actually counting the hydrogens each time. I'm pretty confident that I have the right number because of the unsaturations. As long as I have no more than one unsaturation, I'm fitting my formula. So one pi bond or one ring in this case. Uh, could I do three carbons in a row with a pi bond on the carbons differently? Sure. I could draw that. I have another what's called enol in this case. Uh, I could draw three carbons in a row with a pi bond in the middle and an OH out there. And now it's starting to get a little systematic other ways. Could I do two carbons in a row and, and branch it? Actually, yes, you can if you do an ether, but I need to put a pi bond. I would put one right there between those two carbons. And there's one other way. Actually, no, there's two other ways. We could get to three carbons. You could get the pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen. And I could do that with the oxygen at the end of the chain, or with the oxygen in the middle of the chain. And now we're gonna move on to rings. So what's the largest ring I could make with three carbons and an oxygen? It would be what's called an oxacyclobutane, which looks like that, and that's exactly C3H6O. Uh, then we could get to a three-membered ring with an oxygen coming off of the ring, in this case an OH, that's C3H6O. Uh, alternatively, we could get to a three-membered ring with an oxygen in the ring and then a one-carbon branch coming off of that carbon. And that's, that's nine, and that's what they've asked for. So I think I'm going to stop there. And if you want to try to find more, see if you can go back and see if they are, in fact, different. But that's at least a good starting point for the nine different ones. Those are all definitely different from each other. Um, I'm actually going to skip... E, or at least I'm not going to do all of them. Uh, e has quite a number of unsaturations. You can just challenge yourself to come up with a lot of crazy examples. Uh, the degrees of unsaturation would be 6 minus 1 half of 6 plus 1. That's 4. There are four possible unsaturations, and one is, I hope, the very familiar six-membered ring that looks like that. That's benzene. If you don't already know that, you should. But there are many other ways you can imagine putting six carbons and six hydrogens together. I'll show you just a few to give you an idea of some of the variety of options that exist. It could be a six carbon chain with a couple of alkynes in the middle. That is C6H6. Uh, it could be a cyclopropane with three methylenes attached, three CH2 groups attached. Uh, it could be a cyclopentadiene is a five-membered ring with a methylene coming off. There are four unsaturations. One, two, three, and the ring makes four. That's all I'm checking. Got all my carbons, got all my unsaturations, we're good. Notice those triple bonds each count as two unsaturations because every unsaturation is a ring or a pi bond. 
So an alkyne counts twice for its unsaturations. Uh, there's one more I think that's really interesting just to look at. This actually does exist. This molecule is called prismane, and it looks kind of like a pup tent. If you've ever been camping, or seen photos of small tents. There is a three-dimensional triangular prism of a molecule. That is six carbons and six hydrogens when you add it up. Quite strained, uh, but does exist. Okay, moving forward, let's get to a simpler one. Luckily, this one, C6H14, has no unsaturations. I can actually tell because it's already CNH2N plus 2, and that is a formula you might have learned in your former chemistry class that tells us this is just single bonds, no rings, no pi bonds. So if I were to go through this, I could have hexane. These would actually all name. I could have 2-methylpentane. I could have... 3-methylpentane, and then it's off to the butanes. I could have 2,2-dimethylbutane, or 2,3-dimethylbutane, and those are the five isomers. You know, oh wait, can't I make a 3-carbon chain uh, with a ethyl group and another methyl? Ah, you accidentally made a 4-carbon chain, didn't you? Which is a repeat, so be on the lookout for accidentally drawing something that you've already drawn when you're practicing this. For G, there's four possibilities. Now we have a nitrogen. Let's check degrees of unsaturation. Three minus one half of nine uh, plus zero halogens, but minus the one nitrogen. This is the first nitrogen containing compound we have, plus one more at the end. So three minus a half of four plus one actually gives me zero. So no pi bonds and no rings. Uh, three carbons with a nitrogen, which forms three bonds, as long as there are no charges, which we don't have any. This is a neutral compound. Uh, and that's one, one way that works right there. That would be called uh, propylamine or, or one amino propane. Uh, we could make isopropylamine and stick that NH2 off of the central carbon. That works as well. Uh, you could have a two carbon chain with a nitrogen in between the third carbon, and then there's a hydrogen on that nitrogen. Or you could draw a compound that has no hydrogens on the nitrogen and just three methyls coming off of the nitrogen. That's different as well, trimethylamine. And lastly, they don't give us how many that exist. They just want all the possibilities for C3H8O. Let's see, we have three minus one half of eight, no, uh, no halogens and no nitrogens, and then plus one, you get zero. So not too bad because there's no unsaturations to worry about. Three carbons, and then an oxygen, so I could have propanol, I could have 2-propanol, you could have ethyl methyl ether, and that's actually it. There's only three possibilities for that structure, and that takes care of that. Okay, so that's how you draw different isomers. Uh, we tried to go through a little bit systematically. Coming up next, we will learn how to name some of, these, some of these molecules that have functional groups. I was trying to say some of them anyway, just to get us used to it. Um, and that's a, a surefire way to prove that you've not accidentally drawn the same isomer twice.